morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My name is Kelly, and welcome back to part three, the finale of our Good Omens Plot Breakdown series. Today, we are getting into the real juicy stuff, and I'm so, so excited for it, so let's just dive straight in. Of course, if you haven't seen part one or part two, go watch this first, otherwise this won't make much sense at all. Let's get started. So when we left off, Aziraphale had had a blue ring around him in his bookshop, and he had started talking to Heaven, basically saying that, like, he could stop Armageddon, he thinks he could stop it if he talks to Adam, but they were like, no, no, we're not gonna do it. This is part of the plan. And just then, someone opens the door of the bookshop and it says, away we ye, spawn our hell. And it turns out this person is Shadwell. And he sees the candles and the incense and he has assumed that Aziraphale is, you know, like a witch. He's like, we need to get rid of him. So he starts like backing up towards him, closer and closer into Aziraphale. Aziraphale's like, no, don't come any closer. Like, leave me alone. I'm not what you think I am, blah, blah, blah. But Shadwell just keeps edging closer and closer and closer to him. And then Aziraphale pushed into the blue light from his circle and he disappears. Poof, gone. And Shadwell's like, I'm so good. I don't even know my own part. Meanwhile, in Crowley's flat, we find out that Crowley only really cares about his houseplants and not much else. He's got all these houseplants that he takes care of that he's passionate about, but that's basically it. He turns on the TV and on the TV on a talk show, he sees Haster and Liger. So if you remember, these are two agents of hell and they talk to him through the TV and they say like, what's going on? We don't really trust you. We don't really trust that you're carrying out the mission properly. And we're gonna come and collect you and take you back to hell because you're not doing a good job. And all of a sudden they show up. Now Crowley manages to dump holy water on Liger and ends up like obliterating him. Goodbye my friend. And Hanster keeps coming towards him and he's like, I am gonna get you so bad. I'm gonna take you back to hell and you're gonna be in big trouble. And just at that moment, Crowley's phone rings. Now Crowley takes advantage of this and when he hears a ring, he like picks up the phone and like goes into the phone line. <laughs> so he's able to like, you know, transform himself into the phone line and he's like, going like falling down the phone line and Haster was holding on to Crowley so he's going with him he's like coming along behind him and then the phone rings and on another ring Crowley jumps out of the phone line puts it down and then Haster gets stuck inside the answering machine <laughs> kind of wild I know so back with Shadwell and he's just gotten home and he's now talking to Madame Tracy and he's saying like I don't know what my power is but I made this guy disappear we flip back to the bookshop and it's on fire at this point yeah, it's on fire. And Crowley is looking for Aziraphale. Like, Crowley's kind of gotten rid of his Haster problem for the minute. So he's like, I need help. I need to go see Aziraphale. So Crowley walks through the fire because obviously he's not going to go on fire. And he can't find Aziraphale anywhere. But what he does find is the book. The book. He picks it up along with all the notes and stuff that Aziraphale has written, takes it into his car and drives off. He's driving 120 miles per hour down Oxford Street when he goes through some of the notes and he sees one from Aziraphale and it immediately makes him turn his car around and head towards Tadfield. Just a heads up, there's a lot of flipping between characters here. That's just part of the book. In the TV show they kind of make it so it's all more like easy to follow, I guess. I know me saying it, it might sound confusing, but hopefully we're in part three. We all kind of know our characters by now, so we're all good. The four horsemen of the apocalypse, remember we have death, war, pollution, and famine. They are all part of Armageddon. They're all necessary for Armageddon. They all meet up at like a service station in the motorway. They have like jackets on called the Hells Angels. They're basically pretending to be part of like a motorcycle gang and they all meet up at a service station getting ready to journey for the end of the world. Meanwhile, Aziraphale, obviously if you remember, he kind of went to that blue circle and disappeared. What he's doing is like transferring his spirit between bodies <laughs> until he finds someone he can talk through. So he's flipping between all these bodies. He can't find the right person, the right place where he should be. And he comes to inhabit the body of Madame Tracy. So Shadwell's next door neighbor. And if you remember these two are like talking at this time. So Aziraphale uses Madame Tracy to talk to both her and Shadwell saying that like he needs their help. He tells them about the Antichrist and they all hop on Madame Tracy's scooter and leave for Tadfield. A call center worker named Lisa Morrow is doing like cold calls to people. She calls up Crowley's flat and Haster uses this as an opportunity to be able to get out of the answering machine. So when the phone is ringing, he like hops out, 
and he's now free. Broly is driving like a madman. <laughs> His car is like in bits at this point. It's not doing well. It's in flames. And he basically is like, I can't do this traffic. I need to get to Taffield right now. So he ends up like flying into the air <laughs> and his car just like takes off and he's off. Okay, so we're finally back with Adam and his friends. And if you remember from the last part, where we left him was him talking about like, we can redo the world, we can change things, we can make things better and telling them that he had friends coming to help him. And his friends, so these three, they start to get really freaked out. They're like, we don't like this, we don't want this. They get freaked out and they try to leave. But as they try to run away, Adam, obviously he's very powerful. He's able to make them stop, like they freeze mid run. Adam gets super freaked out. He's like, what is this? Why am I able to do this? He's freaked out by the power that he has. And his body jerks, his head is thrown back and he lets out a huge scream. And in the book it says, a mortal throat should never be able to make this noise. And apparently it went on for a long, long time. So he's screaming, he's screaming, he's screaming. And then eventually it stops. And Adam returns to like the ground in himself. He feels more Adam Young than he has ever felt. Yeah. The them, so his friends, they're all now freed and they're like carving against the side of the quarry. They're like, this guy, like, this is our friend. Like he's freaking us out, what's going on? And Adam, who's now feeling like himself again, he's like, I know what we need to do. He's like, come back, it's all right. Like I'm, you know, I went through a thing, but I'm good now. And he's like, I know what is gonna happen if we don't do something. So we need to do something to save everyone. <laughs> Now Shadwell, Madame Tracy and obviously Aziraphale who's inhabiting Madame Tracy's body, they head on their scooter and they're heading towards Tadfield. <laughs> they're going at like four or five miles an hour because Madame Tracy's scooter is terrible and there's a lot of weight on it. Aziraphale does a little like doo -doo 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 -doo, and they suddenly shut up going super fast into the air. Meanwhile Newt and Anathema decide to head towards a local air force base. The them also head towards there because Adam knows that's where they need to go. So everyone's heading towards this air force Space. Now, R.P. Tyler, he's a new character. R.P. Tyler is like the grumpy old man of the village. So R.P. Tyler is the chairman of the Lower Tadfield Residents Association. So he knows if something's not right in Tadfield, he's gonna pick it up. He sees four people on motorcycles coming towards Tadfield. Of course, these are our four horsemen of the apocalypse dressed up as a Hells Angel gang. He goes up to confront them because he thinks they're like vandals. We don't want them here. So he goes up to talk to them and they just basically say we're lost, like we need directions. So he gives them directions to the Air Force base. Now, just shortly after this, the them, so Adam and his gang, all show up riding their bikes and R.P. Tyler's like, obviously already knows them. He's like, where are you guys going? Like, does your dad know that you're out? And Adam's like, we're going to the Air Force Base. Like, leave us alone, you weirdo. A little after that, R.P. Tyler is just hanging out again. And who should show up on a scooter but Madame Tracy and Shadwell, and they ask, for directions also to the Air Force Base. So everyone is all culminating in the one place. And RP Tyler's like, what are they doing? But he's like, never mind, don't wanna know. That's how you get there, leave me alone. Now again, just after this, RP Tyler is looking at the cows in the field nearby and he's like, hmm, I know cows lying down means that it's gonna rain and cows standing up means it's gonna be fine. But the cows he was looking at in the field were doing slow somersaults in um, the field beside him. And he was like, that is very odd. And just as he's thinking about that, a man in a car pulls up and he smells like a burning smell. And he's like, what is that? And it's Crowley and his car is on fire. And RP thinks, um, does this man know his car's on fire? And then he's like, wait, how could you not know your car was on fire if you've just been in it? Crowley asks for directions and he gives him directions and that's it. And he goes off. Now at this time, the four motorcycles, which are carrying the horsemen of the apocalypse, arrive at the gate. They like disguise themselves as inspectors and they're there for a surprise inspection and they're able to get through. Shadwell and Madame Tracy pull up a little bit later and they're trying to convince the guard to let them in. And as they're standing there, the them come up on their bicycles and the gate just opens because Adam, Adam has power, right? So he just the gate just opens. And Aziraphale's like, I've had enough of this and makes the sergeant basically like disappear. Adam says to his friends that they need to get a crown, a set of scales and a sword. They need to like 
sort these things. And as Madame Tracy Shadwell and Aziraphale are at the gate, Crowley also shows up. Crowley chats to Aziraphale and obviously Aziraphale makes the guard disappear and they also enter. So everyone at this point is all culminated at this airbase. Now meanwhile in the world, electricity is starting to go out everywhere, things are going haywire and weird, any, like, any mechanical things, electrical things are all failing. The horsemen, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, go into one of the buildings and start messing with things, basically making electricity and everything go weird, doing their little part to help the apocalypse happen. And suddenly Death says to the other horseman, he's like, he is here. And they head out to go and find Adam in order to like get their orders and bring about the end of the world. Right, Anathema and Newt see the four horsemen leave this building and they enter afterwards. And Newt, if you remember from part one, right back at the beginning, I said that Newt was someone that liked to play around with electrical stuff. And that's something that he did like his whole life was like experiment with electrical stuff. So Anathema's like, do something, like, can you not fix this? Like try and like reverse it or whatever. So they start doing that. And now things are about to get wild to strap in. So the four horsemen walk up to Adam and his friends and Death says, it is done. Adam says to him, I don't want it done. Like, I didn't want any of this. I didn't have a choice in this. I don't want the world to end. And they're all like, what? Death says your existence requires it. Like your existence causes the Armageddon. It has to happen. It's written. And Adam starts talking about all of the brilliant stuff in the world. He's like, but I have barely even experienced the world. There's so much good stuff. I want to experience it all. And he tells the horseman and Death, he's like, the world isn't gonna end because I have to make it end and I don't want it to end. I just wanna hang out with my friends. We just wanna be normal. And then Pepper, one of his friends, draws out a wooden sword and hits War with it. And when she does that, War like disappears and there's just a sword lying on the ground. Now Wensley Dale, Wensley Dale takes down Famine with the scales. So basically the them, created whenever Adam told them they needed a sword and scales and a crown they created them out of stuff they found so like there's a grass crown a wooden sword like a fake pair of scales whatever so Wensley Dale takes down Famine with the scales like touches Famine with the scales and then he just disappears and there's just scales lying on the ground and then finally Brian takes out Pollution with this grass crown that he like throws at him Pollution disappears and there's just the black crown lying on the floor Death says like without all four of the horsemen, the end of the world cannot happen. And so he vanishes. At this point, all of the electricity in the world starts to come back on. Things look like they might be returning to normal. The weather starts to calm down. Thank goodness Adam has stopped the apocalypse. When Newt has been playing around with electrical stuff, he really thinks he made it happen himself. Like he plays around with the electrical stuff and he's like, I did this, I saved the world. But really like, he did not hold, but he thinks he did. Now Adam sees Crowley, Madame Tracy, and obviously is Aziraphale, who's in Madame Tracy, and he's like, I think you should be two people again. And just like that, Aziraphale shows up beside Madame Tracy and Shadwell. So suddenly the clouds begin to swirl aggressively again, and with a bolt of lightning, the Metatron appears, you know, the spokesperson from heaven. And at the same time, Beelzebub, who is like the agent from hell, shows up as well. And they're really unhappy that this plan hasn't gone down as it was supposed to. Unhappy with Crowley and Aziraphale and Adam. Adam is totally unbothered. Adam is honestly just like, look, it's not gonna happen. I said so. He basically tells them that it's his power and he decides how he wants to use it and he doesn't want to use it for this. Aziraphale and Crowley like back Adam up in this because obviously they don't want the world to end either. They say, how do we know this isn't part of the ineffable plan? This might be what was supposed to happen all along. There's like logic and everyone's like, what are we supposed to do? So Metron and Beelzebub end up going back to heaven and hell because they're like, we need to figure out what we're supposed to do next. But it's not over just yet. Suddenly the air becomes hot and heavy and the ground begins to shake aggressively and Crowley says, this is an Armageddon, it's personal. It's his father. And obviously in this case, we are talking about his biological father. Lucifer, like Satan basically. And this volcano starts to appear and the clouds are swirling and it's stormy and it's awful. And then Adam interferes. Adam's like, no, I am taking control of this. And he is able to make Lucifer go away and replace him with his actual dad, or who he says is his actual dad, Mr. Young. So in place of where this big volcano would be and all this horrible stuff was happening, this car just pulls up and it's Adam's actual dad, Mr. Young. And he says, what's going on here, Adam? Like, what are you doing? The them run towards the gate and everyone goes, oh, good, all happy, yay. 
they didn't have the apocalypse and everyone goes home apart from Crowley and Aziraphale who decide to share a bottle of wine on an empty airstrip nearby and as they're doing this a delivery man appears our good friend the delivery man is back he picks up the crown the sword and the scales in a box and he gets Crowley and Aziraphale to sign for it basically to say that it was like collected. Aziraphale and Crowley get in the jeep happy and they drive back to London. Okay we're at the end. Sunday. Now Sunday shouldn't have come but it did. Newt spent the night with Anathema again and the next day Anathema's like what am I gonna do? Like um, my whole life has been about the book and the plan. Like what am I supposed to do now? And then someone appears at the door and delivers a manuscript to her. And it's the unpublished manuscript of Agnes Nutter's sequel book. So we basically leave Anathema with like a decision to make of like what's she gonna do with this book? Like what is the plan? Now Aziraphale and Crowley, they walk through the park together. They basically like talk about everything that's happened and what they're gonna do next. Aziraphale has his bookshop back, Crowley has his car back and they're just kind of happy. And Crowley can't help but think about the ineffability of the plan and that the end of the world was just never actually supposed to happen. Elsewhere, Madame Tracy invites Shadwell over for Sunday lunch and it seems like they might get a little bit romantic. Shadwell is like retired from the Witchfinders Association and then they talk about looking for a cottage somewhere. And lastly, Adam. So Adam has been grounded, of course, because he was at an Air Force base for no good reason, according to his dad. And his friends come by and they're like, there's like a circus out here. Like, you've got to come and join us. And Adam's like, I can, I'm grounded got to stay in the backyard he's out in his garden and he's like hmm I could use my powers a little bit here like nothing wrong with that so he ends up creating a little hole in the hedge perfect size for his dog to run through so dog runs through the hole and he's like I guess I gotta go find the dog so he runs after him he goes and like enjoys the circus and he returns a little bit later with a few apples as he runs home and he is happy and that is Good omens. Oh, I just freaking love this book. I just love this story. I think it's just so good, honestly. It's one of my favorite ever. I love the love story between Yut and Anathema. That's actually one of my favorite parts of this book. And the friendship between Aziraphale and Crowley, like, I love it. I want to know what you guys think, so let me know down in the comments below what you think of Good Omens. You can also send me recommendations for future series as you would like me to do. But thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it as much as I have, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!